up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, what's up? Toward the inner part of his ass crack. Blue about me not being his dad. Um, after reading the book, she was like, What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, people, what's up, what's up, what's up, what is up, people, what is up, it is me, L Teddy 27 and I am back for yet another review. This, ladies and gentlemen, will be our review for Interview with the Vampire. This is season one, it is episode seven, it is entitled, The Thing Lay Still. All right, y'all, so, yeah, this is the season finale. It's a lot that went on. I got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pages worth of notes here. So let's get down to it. All right. So we start off at present day. Daniel is at the computer saving files, you know, preparing all of the stuff he has to prepare to complete the interview. He and Louis are at the dinner table talking, you know, going over notes and stuff. Uh, Louis talking. So Daniel asks him, because we learned at the end of the last episode that they're going to try to kill the stat. And so he said, well, how the hell do you kill? And how does an, an immortal being become mortal and faces mortality and dies? Is it possible? And so the stat was like, yes, there are a couple ways. Starvation, uh, drinking dead blood, fire, and decapitation. So... But Louis remarked how he um, was quite nervous about the um, notion or the endeavor of being able to actually kill Lestat because Lestat was so much more powerful than them. Lestat was way older. Lestat knew all of the tricks. He knew the game. And he really didn't feel like they had, the, like he and Claudia had the capacity, the wherewithal to actually do it. Um, so he was nervous. So we go back, back in the day, and we see... You know, Louis, Lestat, Claudia going about the same old, same old, basically just tolerating each other, basically just putting up with each other and everything that goes along with that and everything that that means. Just basically, listen, you know, Lestat wanted Louis sleeping in the co same coffin with him and he wanted them. So they just were going about going along to getting along, tolerating each other. And as they called it, enduring, not really liking each other. But hey, we're going to work this out. At least until we get to the point where we can kill this bastard. So, um, as we go back in the, um, and so as we go, they're going about life and everything. So, Claudia refuses at this point to divulge to Louis what she's plotting. She's plotting. She is meticulously plotting, but she refuses to tell Louis exactly why and we find out later on we'll get there later on why she refused to tell Louis why but she refused to tell Louis she had been plotting and Louis kept asking what are we going to do how are we going to do this and she said mm -mm, can't give that up to you he was like why she was like mm -mm, nah nah I ain't gonna give you that information nah because they would talk we know they would talk through telepathy and Claudia at this point had kind of shut Louis off and just would not tell him anything about what she was planning so, um, a man comes by to deliver a letter to them. And he slides it under the, the um, gate at the house. And Lestat came out and Lestat, you know, takes him inside. And Louis and Claudia and Lestat, you know, they, they pound the guy, to, you know, make the guy feel bad. The, the guy was like, oh, people say that you're devils, but I think you're angels. And they were like, yeah, mm, yeah, we're not here for it. We ain't trying to hear nothing you got to say. He was like, listen, I'm actually here for your help. I admire you. So, and they were like, listen, we ain't here for it. They killed the guy and they feed off of him. But we learned that the guy wanted to know their secret to immortality, to youth, to not growing old, because apparently he was sick and he was trying to get information to help him live longer so um Lestat ends up feeding on him first and Lestat ends up um spitting the blood out because he was like oh that's cancer it's blood it blood has filled with cancer so the guy was literally coming there because he had no hope so he was looking for something to help him any kind of cure he could find and he met his death earlier than he probably intended to so with all of that being said, and Lestat was like, listen, this is happening much more frequently. The people are on to us. The block is hot. Let's get the hell out of Dodge. It's time. We done overstayed our welcome. It's time for us to move on and go to a whole nother city and um, live out before these people find us. Because we learned earlier in this episode, there is way, there are ways, I should say, to kill them. And um, 
they don't want to meet their own demise. So better they go away, still unscathed, than to stick around and overstay their welcome. Because they really probably at this point had overstayed their welcome. So, um, uh, the stat says that they must leave um, New Orleans as soon as um, they can. And so, um, he starts to make plans. He says, come on, let's go. We got to make plans. So, um, Claudia... Louis and Lestat, they're going about life just like normal, traversing through the city. And one night, Claudia tells Louis she has a plan. But like I said, she still refuses to tell Louis the plan. They're on the little streetcar. And she tells Louis, hey, listen, I have a plan, but you're too close to him. You're still in love with him. You're still tied to him. You're still connected to him. Y'all sleep in the same bed. If you look into his eyes long enough, you'll be back in love again. And I can't afford for you to, mm -mm, nope, we got to make this happen. You mm -mm, you got too much of a connection to him. I ain't going to even tell you. It ain't even worth it. That was true, but there was a whole nother reason as well that we'll find out later. So Louis was like, but listen, you got to tell me something. And she was like, listen, he has your heart. And Louis was like, yeah. And she said, listen, all I need you to do is save a little part of your heart for me. She said, I know you're going to go back and give him all of your heart, but leave a little part for me. And when the time comes, I'll say I'll kill him and save the both of us. I'll take that little part of your heart and I'll save the both of us and we'll kill him and I'll save the both of us. Um, and so Louis says, OK, I got you. We can do that. So. Then come to find out that um, it's Christmas time and the start is making plans with Louis, Louis and Claudia to leave the city, of course. So he said, listen, Louis was like, let's go to Europe. He was like, nope. We need to go to Brazil. Europe ain't the place to be. I've been there. I can tell you. Mm -mm. Let's go to um, South America. Let's go to Brazil. Buenos Aires. And we can go down there and we'll live a good life for a time being. So the stat is on this piano playing Bach. Claudia comes in and is like, yep, you're so predictable. Always Bach. And Claudia was telling him, bruh, you think I don't know. Claudia kept leaving little nuggets saying, I know you. I've learned you. I've studied you. You, you're so predictable. She kept telling him you're so predictable. And she was banking on him being predictable. But then they go into this interesting conversation about, um, about Lestat and, um, Claudia about, uh, Claudia says, yeah, you know, us mongrels, you know, because she was saying, you know, Bach is the music of white people, of the, you know, slave owners and rich people and white people and us mongrels, we dare not be able to, you know, uh, understand Bach. And what does she do? She sits down at the piano and starts to play Bach with him, basically saying, yeah, you might think I'm beneath you, but I'm going to show you I'm not as beneath you as you think. I can hang with you. You ain't that much uh, uh, far, further ahead of me. I know you think you got this white supremacy and everything, but we're gonna, I'm going to show you real well what us black people can do. And it was beautifully written. That that whole scene right there, I rewinded it like two or three times because it really stuck out to me. I really loved that scene right there. But she absolutely was referencing this white supremacy here. This, this is where that racial layer comes in um, and rears its um, ugly head. And we see there's this this um, allegoric pointing to racism. And it was still that time of in American history where there was a whole lot of racism at that time. So um, after that, Claudia gives Lestat an idea. She says, well, listen, before we leave, why don't we throw a party? She said we could throw a party. She said these people think that we have the fountain of youth anyway. We could lure them in a year thinking that we're going to give them the fountain of youth and go out in a blaze of glory and feast on these people and just, um, you know, go out in a blaze of glory. And Lestat at first didn't think it was a good idea. She knew he was going to think it was a bad idea. But she's, if you know, if you study egotistical and narcissistic people, you know you plant a seed and sometimes they're going to tell you, and most times they're going to tell you, no, that's a stupid idea in the beginning. But if you let that seed sit there, it's going to grow because it's going to fester. And then later on, they'll start to believe, oh, this is an idea that they came up with not knowing you planted the seed. And if you're patient, it's okay. It's okay to let them think that they planted the seed. 
it's I mean, it's okay to let them think that it was all their idea. As long as the end justifies the means. I worked for a boss like that. Where as long as the end justified the means, I didn't mind if it was if I had to make him feel like it was his idea. I just planted a seed. He would tell me, Hell no, we can't do that. No, it's no way in the world. But I planted the seed and then afterwards he would come and say, What was that thing you told me about? And I would say, Oh, it was just a little something, dot 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 and he would be like, Oh, okay. And then the next day, he'll come out with this big elaborate plan. You know, we should do dot, dot, dot. And it would be everything that I had to say. And I had no problem with him taking the credit. I was just wanting to know that the end justified the means that the thing that I wanted to make happen, happened. And that's what we see happening here with Claudia. So we see them go to the movies. Um, the three of them at the movies. And um, the movie is all about Hitler and the Third Reich and so forth. And so um, Claudia tells Louis that um, they should plan. Because Louis was like, well, tell me about this party you. Not Louis Lestat is like, tell me about this party you plan on having. And she was like, yeah, it should be a big, lavish, decadent party. You know, lots of fanciful things, bells, whistles. We should get the, the most rich and the most lavish and gluttonous of people to come. And and just, um, you know, in a private party, um, then have a private gathering and have a final feast on these people. And just go out in a blaze of glory. And so there's this white man there. And, and Lestat thinks about it. And like, hmm, that might be a good idea. And there's this white man in the audience that was um, bothered by them talking through the movie. And Lestat just starts making a man slap himself, slap himself. So then, um, it's New Year's Eve. And they're going and, the, you know, it's New Year's Eve in New Orleans. So these people are celebrating all parts of what it means to be New Year's Eve. So after that, um, um, Claudia um, uh, is talking to Louis through te telepathy. And Louis and Claudia are talking. Louis is like, listen, if you keep pushing this whole party thing, he's going to get be on to you. He's going to know you're up to something. She was like, I want him to be. I want him to be suspicious. This is falling right into my plans. And so... Um, and so they're on this balcony. And so Claudia says, um, well, listen, hey, um, I'm going to kill him at this party. It is going to. I'm absolutely. She does Louis, and this is all through telepathy. I am absolutely going to kill Lestat at this party. So um, she mentions to Lestat, hey, Mardi Gras is early this year. It's the early part of February. Why don't we try to throw a Mardi Gras ball? And um, she tells Louis to, through telepathy to tell us that, tell him it's a bad idea. So Louis like, it's ridiculous. You know it's too late. You know we can't do it. And um, Lestat was like, right, it's too late. But then Lestat says, but wait a minute. We should have uh, tried to do that. And we could starve ourselves. And that would make the feast so much better. The hunger will be so much better. The taste will be extra good. So now... Lestat is starting to come around and he's starting to come up with ways to, in his mind, make him think it's his idea. So then we see, um, they go to Tom. Tom is there. Tom is getting old. Tom, and so it's funny because one of the first thing I noticed Tom does is he tells Claudia, look at this picture. It's me and your two, you know, um, multi, uh, what did he call them? Uh, Two-toned. Um, father is here. That's what he called. I think he called him two toned father. He said, What do you notice? She was like, I noticed they don't got that. You're, you ain't have that ugly X on the side of your face. But he was showing her, Hey, these motherfuckers ain't aged not one single iota. And that's weird. That's not right. So they tell Tom this and we leave him. We're about to get up out of Dodge, but we want to throw a Mardi Gras ball. And Tom was like, First of all, I don't even do party planning. Second of all, it's January. Mardi Gras is next month and it's already too damn late. It ain't happening. So then Lestat um, um, says that he wants to be Raj, king of Mardi Gras. And he was like, I, what are you smoking? They playing these things years in advance. It's no way in hell this is about to happen. So he said, nah, you can't. Louis, please tell him you from here. You tell him what's going on. And Louis was like, listen, um, we need to make this happen. So Claudia chimes in. And Claudia said, because Louis was like, we know you're on a committee. You can make anything happen. He was like, Louis, you know how this goes. So Claudia was like, don't you have a, um, a manufacturing business where you, or a shipping business where you ship 
things. He'd be like, yeah, we ship and manufacture coffee. I'm hitting them across the head on both sides. And they were like, what happened to one of your ships? She knew. And he was like, yeah, we lost one of our ships. And so they were like, what if we got you a new ship? And then he comes around. You know, money talks. So once they told him they would get him a new ship, he was down for the cause. He went and talked to the committee. Excuse me, Lestat and Louis um, started bribing the committee with money and stuff like that. And the people were kind of intrigued. So the members of the committee changed all their plans, made Lestat the um, the king or Raj, the king of Mardi Gras the, um, and the ball and changed all of their plans for the ball. And they just started bribing these people. And the more the money came in, the more people were intrigued. But they were also intrigued because, you know, they had heard the stories about them being demons or satan living there or them having made a deal with the devil whatever they did so that they did not age and they wanted to find out all of the things that they could find out that's how rich white people want to do they want to find out shit they ain't got no business trying to find out so the um in the city you know there was a fire in the city everybody wanted to be there it was the hottest ticket in town nobody wanted to be left out so let's that louis and claudia started making all the plans claudia is making plans to kill the stat but louis and Lestat, um, Stat is making plans for this ball. Lestat is going through, you know, making designs for the uh, float he's going to be on, making designs for the outfits that they're going to have and so forth. And Lestat at that point, Louis remarked at that point that Lestat at that point, you could not have told him it was not his idea. Like at that point, it was completely his idea. Of, of course, forgetting the fact that this was all planted by Claudia. So in present day, when Daniel is talking to Louis, I wrote down that Daniel is paying very close attention to Rashid. Now it's daytime and they have the little things covering some of the windows, but two of the windows is open and Rashid is over there walking by the windows and, um, and you know, taking notes. And Daniel is looking at Rashid weird. And at the time, I didn't know why Daniel was looking at Rashid. I was like, well, why is Daniel paying that much attention to, she was paying so much attention to Rashid that he wasn't even paying that close of attention to um, Louis anymore. And I didn't know at the time. I said, well, why is he um, paying that much attention to Rashid? Louis made sure to stay out of the sunlight, though. So we go back in the day. We see the plans coming together. And so what, um, what they um, said the plan was going to be was they were going to have the ball and at the ball select certain individuals to ask if they wanted to know the secret to youth and immortality. And those people who said yes, they would put a boutonniere on them, a little flower boutonniere, and they would invite them over to the house, trap them to in the house, and then feed on them before they got out of Dodge. So, Claudia, I told you I had been making these plans. So there was this a certain type of drug that she was going to use that was a type of arsenic, and she went to the pharmacy to get that and she got it and she had made plans to um to use the arsenic to poison uh Lestat because what the arsenic does is it kills someone's from the inside out. So they could still look like they're alive and have warm blood and actually be dead and have dead blood in them. And so um that was her plan. She was gonna poison one of the people, get um invite them to the um private party after the ball get Lestat to feed on them, and then Lestat would die. So we have the Mardi Gras parade. Lestat is out of order, as always. So Lestat, during the parade, he on the float. He got this baby, and he fakes like he is eating the baby and blood, you know, fake blood. It wasn't float. It was streamers of red popped out of him. You know, the fanciful things that they do at a Mardi Gras parade. But um, And so some of the people were very turned off by that. So... But even though the people were turned off, there still was a lot of people at the ball. So the ball after the parade went on, it was very, it was everything that Lestat wanted it to be. It was very high class. You know, it, they had all the Victorian um, era garb and stuff like that with the wigs, with the white powdered wigs and stuff and the powdered makeup and everything. And it was all very Victorian-esque, um, very elaborate fanciful and everything you can imagine very decadent um so claudia finds these two twins that she remember i told you she knows lestat and she knows lestat would like them so he she introduces the twins to lestat she says yes i found these two twins 
And so she introduces them to Lestat. Lestat is enamored with them and wants every part of them. So Lestat immediately, um, so when Lestat walks away, Louis sees Lestat and sees that Lestat is into them and becomes jealous and angry. Of course, Claudia gives them a boutonniere, both of them, to come back to the house. So, um, like I said, Louis saw Lestat lusting after them. He was jealous and angry. So, Louis, um, Louis hears what he thought was Claudia. And I happen to be watching it. I usually, like a lot of times, I watch a show on closed caption. And the reason that I watch it on closed caption is sometimes, you know, shows nowadays, sometimes a scene might be too dark and you can't see everything. Or sometimes a scene is has too much loud background and you can't always make out everything that the person is saying. So I oftentimes will watch something on closed caption. So in case I miss something, I can rewind and this and read the caption and see how that, you know, goes with the actual uh, words I'm hearing. So on my closed caption, I saw that in the closed caption said Antoinette said something about a doll, D-O-L-L. -L, and it was very loud. The music was going and, and Louis thought it was Claudia asking him something about a dog. And this is all through telepathy. So Louis asked Claudia, did you ask me about, what about a dog? And Claudia was like, what are you talking about? He was like, you just asked me about a dog. He was like, no. She was like, I said no such thing. I asked you about no damn dog. And he was like, oh, okay. And then Tom rose up and Tom whispers something, but he actually did whisper it. This wasn't through telekinesis. And Tom gives him this elaborate story about how the person who built this hall built the, um, the Capitol building and uh, um, and all of this about you're supposed to be able to hear whispers and all of that stuff, whatever. Um, Louis invites Tom. Louis just can't stand Tom at this point because Tom mentions some. Tom called him a fag and Tom was, you know, berating him and belittling him and everything. And Louis wanted, Louis absolutely wanted to feast on Tom. And so Louis, um, and that's another thing. See, Claudia knew Louis and she knew this that she knew either Lestat or Louis was one of them or both of them were going to invite Tom to that because she knew they wanted parts of Tom um, to feast on Tom. So uh, Louis gives Tom the flower. So we see Louis and um, Tom, they go, to, not Tom, Louis and Lestat go to the balcony at this hall and they're talking and they're, they're really commiserating about having to leave New Orleans and how beautiful it is and how such a great time they've had there and the fact that they have to leave. And this is it seems like what's a a last conversation, a last real deep loving conversation between the two. And both of them kind of chop it up to them being the hunger and the starvation kind of, you know, making them not think well or making them a little more emotional than they would normally be. But they, they were emoting real emotions here and in them talking about having to leave the city, you felt like this was them talking about not the ending of them living in the city, but the ending of their love. This was that last final conversation this, that would lead to the end of their love. And so um, after that, um, Lestat and Louis go inside the hall and they have this last dance, this forbidden dance. This is still, I believe, the 1930s at that point. It's either, it either might be the 1940s at that point um, and early 40s. And... Louis and Lestat, I don't care how much you say, say, it's the 1940s. They weren't with that gay stuff. And baby, they were not here for Louis and Lestat. Louis and Lestat starts dancing and the people are looking and like, oh my. and they start kiss, kissing and Claudia kind of read the room. Claudia read the room. Claudia saw that people were leaving and some of the people that was leave, that would probably end up leaving would be people that she wanted to be back at the house. So she quickly she quickly cut in. She was like, can I cut in please here? Thank you. And she went and, um, and started dancing with Louis. She was like, um, she told her and Louis starts talking through telepathy again. She, he was like, uh, well, did you do it? And she tells Louis through telepathy, yeah, one of the twins, he'll be dead on his feet in an hour. And then she bites Louis and tells him, hey, hey, bro, wake your ass up. We got something to do here. Right? Get it together. So then we get back to the house. So we at the house and um and and Lestat gives this long drawn out speech all about, you know, 
how they came into this water or liquid that they drank and it was just long and drawn out and everybody there was like okay you get to it and so claudia first gives her real age and then louis gives his real age and then lestat gives his real age and they were like yeah we all drank from it and you see how we still look so because i think claudia was 36 and louis was 61 and lestat is like 178 or 79 or something like that and so um, and then after that, uh, Tom picks up the, um, there's a little, uh, a plate, a silver dish on the table that's covered dish and he picks it up thinking it's going to be the little drink because it has cups all around it and there's nothing there. And Tom's like, it seems to be a hole because Tom seemed real drunk at this point. Everybody in there was real, like drunk out of their mind. So Tom was like, it's nothing in your damn pole. What are you talking about? And so the stat sees the moment, jumps on Tom and starts feeding. Starts feeding on Tom, and then we're off to the races. This is a feeding fest, a frenzy, just, just with reckless abandon. They're just feeding on everybody. Feeding, 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 feeding. And so Claudia and Louis corner the two twins. One of the twins is throwing up. Louis feeds on one of them. Lestat comes in the room. And well, the stat hears it while he's feeding on somebody else and runs into the room. When he gets into the room, they got one of the twins sitting in this look like throne type chair. And you have Louis and Lestat. It was, can I just say, there was, it, the imagery here was so beautiful because they were all in this Victorian esque white costume, the three of them. But then it's drenched in this red blood. It was so metaphoric, so beautiful, but so. Um, horrific at the same time. There's this beauty surrounded by this horror at the same time. And to me, it encapsulated the beauty of what Claudia had put together, but the horror in all of it that it meant for Louis. Claudia had put together this beautiful, elaborate plan, and and it was going to be so beautifully done for her, but for Louis, it would be horrific because he was losing his love. And the same thing, um, um, Louis had put, the, Lestat had put together this beautiful, elaborate, what he thought, party and plan only for Claudia, once again, to be the agent of horror and destruction. Loved it. It was wonderful. There was this one scene where they all, where the three of them walked into this room, Claudia in front and Louis and Lestat um, behind her. And it was so beautiful. They had blood drenched from them. It is all white. It was so cool. Anyway. So let's um so the stat comes in there and they're trying to they got the um twin there ready for the stat. They were like, Yeah, we saved them for you. Louis already fed on the other one. And the stat think he done figured it out. The stat said, Oh really? So the stat punctures the man's neck and said, Hmm, seems pretty drunk. Anything else in there? It seems like something else is in there. He's got something else in his blood. And so Louis was like, probably the gin. So the stat think he done figured it out. The stat says, are you sure? He says, I'm like, are you sure, my love, um, that there's nothing else in there, my love? And so Louis tries to say something. He was like, I wasn't talking about you. Who comes in the door? That bitch, Antoinette. I was like, bitch. So we come to find out Antoinette has been listening. Antoinette has been turned into a vampire by um, Lestat. And so now she has the ability to hear Louis and um, Claudia. Because Louis and Claudia didn't make her. So she can hear them. And so she had been following Claudia around. Fo following Claudia and Louis around. Listening to their conversation. But the thing is, Claudia knew that. Antoinette knew Claudia. Antoinette must have went and followed Lestat one day. And watched Lestat make Claudia. Because she knew Claudia was around. She knew full well. She was on to him earlier. Like she said, he was very, very... um. Easy to figure out. He was predictable. And she had figured it out. And so while Louis was like, yeah, Claudia has been following y'all around and she's been listening. She told me that it was going to be one of the twins because that's what you told Louis. And they flash back and show all of these scenes where Claudia was there. So um, Louis turns on, um, the stat turns on Louis and grabs Louis and Claud Claudia grabs, not Claudia, Antoinette grabs Claudia and forces Claudia to drink from the twin. Which she does, because he was like, we should never have made her. She'll die, and this will be better for us, and Antoinette will be better for us. Baby, 
after he said all that, and Louis starts coughing and coughing up blood. And um, not Louis Lestat starts coughing up blood. Claudia gets free from Antoinette. And Lestat is on the ground coughing and barely hanging on. And Claudia grabs one of the little um, wood chipper things from the um, fire, uh, from the um, chimney or whatever, and stabs Claudia into the ground and stabs her and pins her into the floor. And Claudia was like, oh, you really thought I was that stupid? Um, what's that? I knew all about her. I made sure she heard all of the wrong things. I told her the wrong information. She said, yeah, I knew who you would go to. The same one who called you him, Tom. She knew Tom. Uh, she knew um, the stats ego and hubris would not let him get give up the uh, right to take Tom out first. And she had planted the poison in Tom not the twins. And she said the twins to Louis, knowing that one, Antoinette was listening, and two, she didn't trust that Louis wouldn't tell Lestat either. And baby, Lestat started vomiting up and all of that stuff. And Claudia um, is talking to Lestat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell him she's been on him the whole time. Now, um, Louis... She tells Louis, go ahead and say your goodbyes, boo. Go ahead, because this over. We about to end this now. So Louis, you know, there's this whole dramatic moment. Louis is taking Lestat, and he knows he got this. So he, instead of decapitating Lestat, he slits his throat. And Lestat is said, sitting there choking on his own blood, eyes roll back, and all of that shit. But we know you can't kill a vampire. Like There's only certain ways you can kill a vampire, and we ain't did none of that yet. So... um. Lestat is laying in a pool of his own blood. Baby, my girl, gangsta ass Claudia, roll up in there, gets her little diary, takes her little pen, dips it in Lestat's blood from his neck, starts writing in her little diary, sits right next to Lestat, <laughs> and starts writing her journal. I was like, bitch, that shit is gangsta as fuck. And so, um, um, and the message says, put me in my coffin, Louis, Louis. And so Claudia um, and Louis ends up burning all of the bodies. And they burn Antoinette alive because that's the only way they can kill her. So they know they have to burn her. So they burn her. Antoinette is dead. And then instead of killing Lestat, they roll Lestat up in a um, carpet and put him inside one of the coffins and throw it on the trash dump. Now... Claudia and Louis ends up escaping on one of the boats that that um they bought for Tom because they knew Tom's ships went back and forth to Europe and that he would send coffins. And so it was an easy way for them to make an escape via the coffins on that ship. So they went away. They escaped to Europe. But we get back to present day. And in present day, Daniel done figured this shit out. Daniel said, wait a fucking minute. Wait a goddamn minute. He said, wait a minute. Now, in reading these diaries, I noticed that Claudia, when y'all first started to go over there, seemed to hate your guts for a whole, for a, for a good amount of time. And he was like, why the fuck would she hate your guts? He was, And then he figured out, he said, wait a minute. You knew that if you throw something on a trash dump, it ends up in a landfill or in a junkyard or in the, you know, whatever. What's... In landfills, big ass rats, rats that a fucking vampire can come back to life off of. And you knew y'all had already made the plans to have coffins that lock themselves from the inside and could unlock themselves from the inside. And you knew that if given enough time, the stack could come back to life in that goddamn landfill feeding off of them goddamn rats. Remember, we learned that early on in the season, early on in the season, when Louis first started eating rat or feeding off rats, Lestat told him, yeah, you can live off of it. It ain't going to be that good, but you can live. A vampire could absolutely live off of it. So that's when Danny was like, now, wait a minute. Claudia was mad at you because you refused to kill Lestat. And so we flash back to back in time. And Claudia was like, listen, it's almost daylight. We got to put him in this um, fire. That's the only, in this incinerator. That's the only way for us to be sure that his ass is dead. And Louis goes off because Louis is still grieving. 
the death of Lestat. And Louis grabs Claudia by the throat and said, no, no, we cannot. We will not do that. And so that's how they ended up leaving him on the trash dump. And he making it to the um, land, landfill and so forth. And that's why Claudia was upset with him when they first started going to Europe. She hated his guts because he refused to kill Lestat. And she knew Lestat would eventually come. So Daniel gets to this point where Daniel done figured it out and Daniel is pushing. He's pushing that sore point, that sore, that sore spot. He's pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Now, this is something Daniel had done before. Why? Because while Daniel keeps pushing Lestat, and he's, he's pounding Lestat with his words and nah, you knew this would happen. You knew this, you knew this, you did this, you did that, da 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 da. And let's and you see Louis getting visibly and demonstrably more angry. And so after that, Dan Rashid tells Daniel, listen, please stop. You don't know the whole story. You only know half the story and you will be ashamed once you learn the real story. Daniel don't give a shit. Daniel keeps pushing Louis. Keeps pushing. After that Behind, because they went into a, the other room, behind Daniel, Rashid's back there. You see Rashid take contacts out of his eyes. Because up to this point, Rashid done had normal eyes to us. Rashid takes these contacts out of his eyes. And you see Rashid starts floating in the air. And then while Daniel's pushing, he says, hey, why is this different? He said, Rashid said, because I won't save you from behind Daniel, because I won't save you. If he tries to kill you again, Daniel had forgot that Rashid, that um, Louis had tried to kill him 50 years ago. Remember at the end of last season, I mean last episode, we saw Rashid in this, in the bar and he tells Louis, yeah, you can go ahead and have the interview with him. So we know Rashid was with Louis back when they did the first interview. So now we're connecting dots. Louis is actually a vampire. So when he took the contacts out, his eyes turned back to, you know, I think his eyes were orange because you know the irises of the vampires aren't normal colors so his was orange and that's why he was he would go around wearing the um contacts so that daniel wouldn't figure out that he was a vampire baby um rashid is floating in the air and all of this stuff and um daniel said but wait a minute i saw you walking in the sun and louis was like listen after after uh, a certain amount of time the longer the older we are the more the sun loses its effect on us and a vampire like me, who's 514 years old, the sun don't have no effect on me, honey. I can walk through the sun just like you can. It don't bother me, honey. And so he starts floating and he grabs his book, gives the book to Daniel. And Daniel looks through this book and it has these old, 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 looks like articles or archives or whatnot. And so after that, um, we tur Daniel turns around and Louis says, Daniel, I want to introduce you to our, the vampire Armand, the love of my life. And it goes off. And I was like, oh. Because <laughs> y'all know Armand is, um, is, um, he's the head of a coven of vampires. And he, you know, is very powerful and very, like, he is one of the most powerful vampires there are out there. And so that sets us up for season two now we know if you watch the movie you know when you read the books you know at some point claudia has to die and claudia is still alive so that means we got a lot more drama up until the point where and i like that the series is able to flush out things that the movie was not able to flush out we got a lot more details in the um series the, the series is far better than the um, movie and the movie was really really good but in the movie once they got to europe after lestat they tried to kill lestat the first time it gets really 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 um it goes really fast and they don't give you a lot of information about Armand and the coven of vampires and they should so I feel like they'll be able to flush that out a lot better now we know Lestat's not there because in that conversation that Daniel has with Louis they show you that Lestat is in that um landfill pulling rats out of the landfill and eating them so we know Lestat ain't dead so it's so much so much drama so much of the story left to go and um, I can't wait to see where this goes. I cannot wait to see where it goes. Listen, that is season one of Interview with the Vampire. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. Let me know um, what y'all saw. Let me know how what y'all thought was different from what I thought. You know, let's argue, argue about what we saw. If you like what you see, please hit the like button, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. 
we'll let you know we'll be back next season. Um, that's all I got for y'all. Until next time, thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.